Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We're on a tight schedule. We apologize for moving so fast. Have a seat, please, and be comfortable. Okay, the first question that we have for you is what in the world is a true conservative? Everybody that comes to our meetings promises to be a Tea Party conservative. Well, first can I say, I know we're on a, a tight timeline here, but first, thanks for having this forum. And for me to be here, it's the first time I've experienced something like this, and it's humbling to be around you. Great Americans that want to make America great. And I've met some people that I've only read about in the newspaper, so thanks for having me. It's a great time. I think that, the, that uh, when you think about a conservative, you talk about the principles that you already laid out. What we need in the United States is not more government. We need less government. We need a limited government. We need a strong national defense. We need market economies that work. And we have to have personal responsibility, and that starts with me and you and our families, and we have to get back to fiscal responsibility. If we don't do those things, we can't keep America great. And the American dream that I want for my kids and my grandkids and the generation after that will melt away. So I think those are some guiding principles. Could you add just a little bit more to what a real conservative is versus a American patriot? Is there a difference? Love America. Is that conservatism? Is love of America conservative? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think those are some of the things that we have in common here tonight. Love of America. Belief in the future of America and a great dream. Uh, belief, in, belief in the American dream. So I'm not sure I'm answering your question correctly here, or what you're well, trying we're to trying, get at. We're trying to, to find out who the real conservatives are, because a lot of people run as a conservative in Collin County, Texas, and then, surprise, in office, we don't always get conservative voting. Imagine that. Yeah, here's the thing. If we are conservatives, and we frame our conversations around the Constitution of the United States, that has to be the guiding document. If we can't do that, we can't deliver on the promise of America. So I think one of the key fundamental things that a conservative must do is lay the foundation and have a discussion and use the, the Constitution as the framework and the guiding principles to make decisions. I think, I, to me, that's the critical thing here. We can't have a government that is intrusive, that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't fall back on the Constitution as the guiding document to make a difference in our lives. Is there anything you'd add to that in terms of why you're running? And, and I apologize, I forgot when you came up here. Thank you so much for all your years of sacrifice for our country. I've lived in uh, Quonset in Okinawa, so I know that military life isn't always pleasant. Thank you for Well, your thank you very much for recognizing that. And for all the veterans that are out there, the same thing. I met Sean, who's a, a, a Marine back in the corner there. Anything else about why you're running, sir? Well, I, here's the reason I'm running. One is, as I mentioned earlier, I'm deeply concerned that we as Americans are not doing what we need to do to keep America great. I'm deeply concerned that the American dream won't be available for, as I said, my children and grandchildren. I'm deeply concerned that the United States government is not doing enough to, depend, to protect our interests our national interest at home and abroad. We're not doing enough to secure the borders. We're not doing enough to restore rational immigration that's based on the rule of law. We're not doing enough to transform government. And I believe if we want to do that, we've got to send people to Washington that think and act differently than we do today. Because if we don't, we're going to have the same conversation two years from now. We're going to send the same people back to Washington, and we will have gotten the same result. So I'm running because I believe we have to defeat the status quo. I believe that we need strong leaders now, and I believe that we need strong leaders in the future. Anything, sir, that you'd add to that in terms of your qualifications? Anything we need to know about why you're qualified? Well, I mentioned earlier, you know, I've got five kids and grand, uh, 12 grandkids. Um, what I bring to this office is 30 years of experience in running large and small businesses. What I bring to this office is my understanding of education. I teach in the university system. I bring an understanding of healthcare, having led a healthcare performance improvement company. And perhaps most importantly, I bring my military background. I have been with our soldiers in combat. 
I know how great they are. I have been and comforted families that have lost their loved ones and who have kept the home fires burning. And perhaps what's even better than all that, I'm not a professional politician. So I bring a new point of view because I think that's what we need in Washington. And if we are satisfied collectively with collectively as a nation or in this group with the politicians that we currently have, then we should send them all back to Washington. But if we believe that we want to get something different, if we believe that we can make a difference, then we need to do something different with our political leaders. And there's nowhere better to start than right here in Collin County in District 3. Thank you for that. Now, a question that we're trying to ask everyone, campaign financing is essential. You can't run without spending a little money. Yes, Maybe as, a lot as I'm finding so out. So what's your philosophy <laughs> and practice when it comes to, to campaign financing? Well, my practice is I'm funding my own campaign. I've got a few donations here and there, but by and large, I'm funding my own campaign. And here's what I'm discovering. So I'm new in politics. Some of you might think that's good. Some of you might think that's bad. But what I've discovered so far, and the people that, I, that have donated money to my campaign is, I don't want to be beholden to anybody that's going to finance my campaign. So what I think we need to do in the United States is we need to to, first off, I think uh, Dodd-Frank's, the finance uh, campaign uh, reform bill, that's got to go. we got to reform that and bring it back. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think our politicians in Washington should be able to be bought. I don't know how they can represent Americans. I don't know how they can represent you and me if we have insurance companies in their back pocket or other big donors. That's not what makes America great. Okay, yeah, there are a lot of critical issues. Uh, immigration, Syrian refugees, uh, defense of natural marriage. If you're in Congress and the bill you worked hardest for is somehow connected to provision to provide dollars to Planned Parenthood, what in the world do you do? Yeah, first off, I am totally opposed to federal funding for Planned Parenthood. This is one reason why I think that at the end of the day, we should think and have a big debate about line item veto on the national budget. We cannot hold hostage those things that make America great to include national defense if we also have to fund things like Planned Parenthood. So I, I would strike that from the, from the, from the, at the very beginning. Okay, we'd love to have more time with you. We're down to the audience question portion. And okay. the most important thing is to please stay as late, as late as you can after the meeting. Okay. And there'll be a lot of people milling around and wanting to talk to you okay, really outside good. of the right. Question, yes, sir. What are your thoughts about the Middle East and what would you do? Well, I think... <laughs> what are your thoughts about the Middle East and what would you do? <laughs> 30 seconds. Well, First off, I think how we handle ISIS right now is going to be a defining decision that we make in America. I think that we have to decapitate and kill ISIS right now. We can't mess around any longer with them because it affects our national interest at home and abroad. And there's things that we need to do. We need to consult with our military leaders. We need to make sure that we go in with clear objectives and exit strategy. And we need to bring all the elements of national power to bear. Diplomatic pressure, informational pressure, military pressure, and all the finance pressure that we can get off. That's what we need to do in the Middle East. A hard question to answer in 30 seconds. Howard, please. As a field grade officer, you're very familiar with building teams. I'm uh, curious about uh, how you've gone about building your team to get you elected as a Congress. Well, first off, I believe that teams are absolutely how you win wars and how you make Congress work. I believe that le our best leaders in the future are going to be those leaders that learn to collaborate at a totally different level. So you've got to build trust. Trust is the glue that holds teams together, and that's why we need great people in Washington. Final question from uh, the, the platform here. Is there ever been a time when your integrity was really challenged and you had a difficult decision what to do? Well, first off, I think every decision we make is important because our decisions determine our destiny. But if we are grounded, and I try to be grounded, and I wouldn't say that I, you know, look, I'm a human being. I make mistakes just like everybody else. But if we are grounded in, in principles, 
when we make decisions, those decisions are based on those principles, there's a high likelihood that we can live a life of integrity and make the right kinds of decisions. Wish we had more time up here. Uh, please stay this evening. Appreciate your time so much and your service.